Praise the Lord. It's great to connect with you. Father, we thank you for your presence today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray that as the word comes forth, that you would stir our hearts, you would illuminate our spirits, and you will cause your grace to be imparted upon us. In Jesus' precious name. Today, I'd like to speak on forgiveness. Very, very, very important. Uh, one of the greatest tools of a believer is his faith. It's by our faith that we walk with God. It's by our faith that we get saved. It's by our faith that we transact, whatever transaction we're doing with God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And let him that comes to God believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 and in verse 6. And so we see that our faith is very important. But Galatians 5 and verse 6 says that faith worketh by love, meaning our faith can suffer paralysis when we do not walk in love. Again, one of the things that we use our faith for the most is in the place of prayer. We want to be careful to make sure that our prayers are not um, hindered, okay? Because prayers can be hindered. I can remember Peter speaking to husbands and wives in 1 Peter 3 and verse 7. And if you look at the last line in that verse, he says that your prayers be not hindered. There are things we can do, whether as individuals or whether as couples, that can hinder our prayers. So we want to make sure that our prayers are not hindered. Sincerely, one of the things that can give you speedy answers to prayer is when you walk in love, when you forgive easily when you walk in love, when you forgive easily when you walk in love. In Mark chapter 11 and in verse 25, Jesus was teaching and he said, when you stand praying, forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. It is clear that unforgiveness is one of the greatest limitations to answered prayers. Some people would rather live without God's goodness in their lives than forgive their brother or their sister. It should be a shame that after many years of offenses, after many months of offenses and weeks of you know bearing an offense in your heart, you still carry it on. You should not cross this year with an offense in your heart. The truth is, you are the one doing yourself a great disservice because you will suffer much, much, much more than whoever the offender is. We are believers. Love is one of the greatest attributes that identifies spirituality. When a believer says that he is born again and he serves God and he, and he loves God, look at his life. If he cannot work, walk in love, if he cannot forgive, then there are question marks to the veracity of his claim. You cannot truly be a Christian if you cannot forgive. You cannot truly be a Christian if you cannot forgive. Love will bring speedy answers to prayer. In 1 John chapter 4 and in verse 20, I'll read 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? If you cannot love your brother that you can see physically, how can you love God? whom you haven't seen physically. These are tangible indices that measure our standing with God and that validate our claim to be sons of God upon the earth. Do not hinder your own prayers. Learn to forgive. Don't wait until people, you know, go on all fours, people prostrate and people roll in the mud before you forgive. Forgive people even before they ask for it. Learn to forgive. Forgiveness is powerful. I know love to be the greatest attribute of spirituality. You want to see greater manifestations of the Holy Spirit in your life. You want to see the power of God like never before. You want to see the goodness of God like never before. One of the keys 
is to walk in love. The Bible teaches us to have bowels of mercies. And you see, every time I look at that scripture, I cannot help but notice the details. Mercies, bowels of mercies. It should be easy for you to forgive many, many, many times. Peter asked Jesus, how many times should we forgive? And he said, 70 times 7. That's 490. But you see, that teaching is not necessarily um, depending on the number 490. And Jesus wasn't saying that if you have forgiven 490 times at the 491st time, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. 490. It will be ridiculous that you're keeping a record of offenses. Don't forget. Do you remember the teaching that says love does not keep a record of offenses? So 490 there was just a figurative way of saying as many times as needed, as many times as possible. If you count offenses and keep record of offenses, there is a very strong likelihood that you never even forgave the first time. I've often said burn the black book. There are people who have that black book with offenses and time and things and people's names and all. That is demonic. Burn it. Throw it away. You will enjoy more of God's mercies upon your life as you learn to give out mercies. Don't forget the law of seed time and harvest is powerful and it goes beyond sowing material things and sowing money. If you want to see mercies in your life, sow mercy. Ephesians 6, 8 says, knowing that whatever it is that you do for someone else, God will make happen for you. Everything we do is a seed. Whatever we give is a seed. And it's very important to know that so that we are conscious about what we do, knowing that we will receive a harvest of these things into our lives. Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew chapter number 5, I'll read two verses, verse 23 and verse 24. The Bible says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee, leave thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, first be reconciled, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gifts. A gift here may not always be physical things. Every time we come to God's presence, we're coming with worship, we're coming with prayers, we're coming with supplications, we're, whatever it is that we bring to the altar, God will acknowledge, God will receive us when our hearts are clear and when our hearts are clean. An unforgiving person has used his own hands to shut the heavens over his life. An unforgiving person has used his own hands to shut his or uh, to shut the heavens over his own life. I like us to take it seriously because next year I believe that there will be mighty manifestations as 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 we have never seen before. But you have to prepare yourself. Every time people prepare themselves, they see the glory of God. It's important that we prepare ourselves. And you who cannot forgive, you can forgive. You can forgive because we are born of God. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So Jesus actually came on the premise of love. And this, in, this is the love of God. The Bible says in the book of Romans that while we were yet sinners, he loved us. He loved us. Again, we see in 1 John that we love the Lord because he first loved us. So we came into the kingdom on the premise of love. The nature of our birth is the nature of love. It is impossible to be a believer if you cannot love. It's in you and you can make it happen. How be it? It's your choice. You can choose to walk in hatred and darkness and wickedness because unforgiveness eventually is wickedness. It doesn't matter what was done against you. Unforgiveness from your path is wickedness. God expects us as Christians to demonstrate his love. The only way we can show appreciation for 
the love that God shed upon us in sending Christ to bring us into the kingdom is to show that same love. And I saw in the Bible, in the book of Colossians, where Paul is teaching couples and he said that a husband should love his wife as Christ loved the church, as Christ loved the church, is the exact same love. The same love that brought Jesus to earth to bring us into the kingdom is the same love that we have. You can release it or you can shut it out. I want to encourage you today. You want to see answers to prayer like never before. You want to see the grace of God. You want to see the mercies of God. You want to see the power of God like never before. It's time to begin to love. You want to grow spiritually in leaps and bounds. You want your faith to prosper. You want your faith to grow. Paul was talking to the church at, um, I believe it's Thessalonica. Yes, the church at Thessalonica. And he said to them how he was excited in hearing that their faith grew in leaps and bounds. It is possible for your faith to grow in leaps and bounds. Stop playing with the things of God. Stop playing church. Stop playing this thing. It's time to be a believer in spirit and in truth. And the Father seeks such to worship him. They that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Unforgiveness is wickedness. Unforgiveness is darkness. If you cannot walk in love, the chances of making heaven are very slim. I pray that God will help you and God will touch your heart today and help you release the love of the Father in your life and to shine it upon whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors, whoever it is that, 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 that needs to receive that love. They don't have to deserve it. Whoever it is that needs to receive that love, that they will receive that love from you and that they will see God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you today that God moves over your life, that the Spirit of God stirs the love of God in your heart like never before. That that love will find expression, reaching out to everyone who crosses your path, and that the power of God for forgiveness will find expression through you to everyone who has hurt you, everyone who has harmed you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will see God like never before. Let grace and peace and mercies be magnified over your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <music>